In the last section of the course, we talked all about asynchronous code, everything from callbacks to promises all the way to async await. And in this section of the course, we're going to be talking about the advanced features of the DOM, which heavily use these different asynchronous code methods. In this first video, we're going to be talking about fetch, which is probably the most popular advanced DOM technique that you're going to use. Essentially, all fetch lets you do is query information that is on the web. Generally, you're going to do this through the form of an API, and an API is really just a website that is formatted in a way that will return to you data that you can use inside of your JavaScript code or really any other programming language you want. But we're, of course, specifically using JavaScript. And for this video tutorial, we're going to be using an API called the JSON Placeholder API, which is a great API for just testing out different skills of fetching data from an API because it's a completely fake API that you can do anything you want with. And this is just at jsonplaceholder.typeecode.com. So before we start diving into querying this API, let's actually talk about how to use fetch. And to get started, I just have this blank HTML page that has a single script file being loaded. And then inside of here, we have that script.js file. And we can put anything we want in here, for example, console.log. Hi. And if I save that and move this to the top of my page, move this down to the bottom, you can see that the console is printing out hi. And then we have our JSON placeholder API up here if we need to look at that in a little bit. So we have our code hooked up to our browser, and now we can start writing that fetch API. And fetch is just a function on the browser window object. So you can say like window.fetch, and that's your method. But if you remember correctly, we can leave this window off. So we can just write the word fetch. And inside of here, what we need to do is put the URL that we're actually going to be fetching. So if we scroll down here in this a little ways, we can see here that we have these things called resources. These are the different things we can query from this placeholder API. Let's say that we wanted to query users because there's only 10 of them, so that's pretty small. We can just copy this URL up here, jsonplaceholder.typeycode.com slash users. We're going to paste that into our fetch. So now what we're essentially saying is, hey, browser, go fetch data from this URL and return it to me. And as you can see here, we have this array of different JSON objects, so we can really easily use this inside of our code. So let's just take a look at what this returns. If we log this out, we can say console.log of this fetch. If we save, you're going to notice that we get a promise. And the reason for that is because this is an asynchronous event. Getting data from an API that's external, such as this JSON placeholder, it could be really slow. It's not a fast operation at all. So JavaScript uses promises in order to do this in the background while other parts of your code are running. So let's remove this console log. Come down here, we can just say console.log here. If you save, you can see that here is being printed out. And if you remember correctly with promises, we need to use dot then in order to chain our promises. And when you're using fetch, the very first thing that gets returned from your dot then is going to be your response object. So here, this is going to be our response. Inside of our response, let's just console.log response. And now you can see here gets printed out first, because if you remember, fetch is asynchronous. So it's going to run top to bottom. It's going to start our request, but it's going to be in process. It's going to log out this here. And then when our request finishes, we're going to get to this log here. Hopefully you remember that from our promise video. But essentially, if we open up this response, you're going to notice we get a bunch of interesting information. We get things such as the headers of our response. We get the status. In our case, this is OK, so that's true. Whether or not this was redirected, here's the actual status itself, the text, type, the URL that requested, and then most importantly, up here, our body. But the interesting thing about this body is you'll notice it comes in this readable stream format, and you can't actually directly access your body through this readable stream. You need to go one step further and use another promise. So what we need to do here is take our response. We need to convert this to JSON because as you can see, this is a JSON response. So we can just say response.json. This is a method we can call on response and it'll convert this body here to JSON, which we can actually use as a JavaScript object. And then this is gonna give us a further dot then if we make sure that we return this response because converting this to JSON is again, fairly slow. So this is done asynchronously. And this right here, response.json, is another promise. So now we are doing a dot then for this response.json promise, and this will return to us all of our data. And this data is whatever we get returned from our API. It's just this array of users in our case. Let's console.log out our data and see what this looks like. You can say we got here, and now we have down here 10 objects, our 10 users, and each one of them is inside this array. So our first one you can see here matches this first user here, an ID one. They have this email sincere at april.biz, just like that. So as you can see, this matches up to this user here. So I want to just kind of recap exactly what we've done here. Let's just get rid of this console log here. It's a little confusing. What we've done, we told our fetch, we're saying, hey, we want to get data from this URL here. 
And then when we get that data back, we're inside of this dot then and we have a response. What we want to do is we say, hey, we have that response, but our response is a JSON object, in our case, a JSON array. So we need to convert that response to JSON so we can use it inside of JavaScript. And then down here, we're saying, okay, now we have the JavaScript version of our code, our actual data we wanted. So let's use that however we want. In our case, we're just going to log out the data. What I want you to do is actually take this a step further. I want you, instead of just console logging the data, I want you to log the name of each of the users. And you can do this one by one, or you can just log out an array of all of the different usernames, either one, whatever you want to do, but pause the video here and try that out. Okay, hopefully you had a little bit of a chance to try this out. So really all we need to do here is take our data, which is an array of these different objects. We want to get just the name portion. So we can just use map to do that. And here we're going to have an individual user. And all we want to do is get our user dot name. Now we can console dot log this, and this should just be an array of all of our user names. So if I save this, you can see we have an array of all the names of our users. And you can check up here, you can see that this name is matching here. So clearly we have all of this working correctly. Now the next thing that I want you to do, which is going to be a little bit trickier, is I want you to convert this promise version of fetch over to an async await version. So if you remember correctly, you need an async function, we're just going to call this do stuff. And then we're going to call do stuff down here. And inside of here, what I want you to do is essentially exactly what I've done up here with a normal fetch. So I just want you to convert it over to an async await version. And pause the video here, give yourself a chance to do that, and then I'll show you how it's done. So hopefully you've paused this and tried this out yourself. The first thing we need to do is get our fetch. So let's copy in our fetch just like we normally would. So we're fetching from this URL here. And then what we need to do is take our first dot then. This returns a response. So with async await, if we just await this fetch, then we know that we're going to get this object here, response, as the result. So we can say const response is equal to awaiting this fetch with this URL. And to make our code a little bit cleaner, I'm actually going to take this URL and put it into a variable up here just so we can put that down into our code and we don't have really long lines to worry about. And of course, I spelled the response wrong. There we go. We can put URL up here as well. Okay, so now we have a response. The next thing we need to do is convert that response to JSON. So we can say response.json. And again, we need to await this since this is asynchronous and that's going to return to us our data. In our case, our data is really just our users. So let's name it users to be a little bit more specific. And now here we can console dot log out our users dot map each one of our users to their individual name. So if I comment this out up here, besides this URL, click save, you can see we get the exact same return down here because we're properly doing the exact same thing as our fetch up here. We just converted it to an async await version. And really all we did to convert to async await is we took our first promise, we awaited it, took the response of that promise, which is our first dot then, and have it here. Next thing we did is the same thing. We awaited our next promise. We got the response data, in our case, our users here, saved it to a variable. Then we did all the information inside of the dot then of that promise, just one by one by one. Now, what happens if we have an error? Let's say we try to get an individual user. We could say, for example, users slash one. This will get us the user with the ID of one, which is our first user. So we change this to user. And here we don't do any crazy mapping. We just log out the user. This should log out our first user. When we save, you see we get our very first user and all of the information. What happens if we try to get a user that doesn't exist? We scroll down here, there's only 10 users, so the max ID is 10. So what happens if we try to get user 20? This user doesn't exist. When we save, you can see that we get a 404 error. This just means that we tried to get information, but it doesn't actually exist. But you'll notice that it still runs all of our code. We're logging out our user down here, which is just an empty object because there is no user. This is probably a little bit confusing though, because you would think that this would throw an error because as you can see, there is an error. There is no user. We tried to get a user that doesn't exist and that should be an error. But the way that fetch works inside of JavaScript, that it'll only throw an error if there is an actual error connecting to the server or getting data from the server. This is an expected error. Essentially, that means that the server handled our request properly and it gave us a 404 response. It said, you tried to get data and it doesn't exist. We expected this, so here's our response. Fetch will only error if there's some type of internal error. Maybe you lose internet connection. That would cause you to throw an error. But in our case, we didn't have any of those weird edge case errors. So we actually just got a normal response. So how would we actually handle that? Well, what you do is you check your response. We can say response.ok. Okay. If you remember correctly, 
This was either true or false, whether or not our response was successful or not. And if our response is a failure, for example here, this is going to return false. Let's console.log this out to see exactly what this looks like. If we save, you can see our OK is set to false. But if we get user1, for example, which exists, we get an OK response of true. So we can really easily here check to see if our response is OK or not, and we can do things inside of here. So we could say, if response.ok, then maybe we're going to get our user and log them out like this. Otherwise, we're just going to console.log failure. And now if we save this, you can see it logs out our user. But if we try to get a user that doesn't exist, it's going to just log out the text failure instead of trying to convert that user to, or convert that JSON, I'm sorry, to a user and log out that user because we couldn't actually find one. So generally when you're fetching from an API or fetching a URL, you're not really gonna have to worry too much about the .catch version of it because that really is only happening inside of edge cases. It's obviously good to make sure you catch errors. So it would be a good idea to come in here, have our try catch with an error, just like that this up here, make sure this is inside of parentheses. And then inside of here, we could say console.error out our error. And this would just cover us in case of a problem where we lost internet connection or tried to make a fetch without internet connection. And then of course, everything is working as expected. Now, in order to test what happens if we, for example, don't have an internet connection, we can emulate that by going over here to our network tab and this little section where it says online, we can change this to offline and it'll actually pretend that we're currently offline. The only issue with this is that we're using something called live server in order to actually do our re-rendering of our page. And that requires you to be online instead of this offline mode, which is gonna say you're not connected to the server because it's faking that you're not connected. So what we need to do is actually just set this up in a way that we click a button to make this request. That way we don't need to refresh our page. So we can say click to make request. Now here, let's select that button. We can just say const button equals document.query selector of button. Now we can say button.add event listener on click. And in this event listener, all we wanna do is call our do stuff function. So now this do stuff here, which is getting our user is only gonna be called when we click on our button. So let's save this. And what we can do is I can just pull this over. This is going to be for making our request. And down here, we can just go to offline mode. So we're in offline mode right now. And if I go to the console and I click this button, you're gonna notice that we get a correct error. It says type error failed to fetch. And this is what happens inside of our catch. We're not connected to the internet. So we're getting a failure in our fetch because it's an unexpected error. We are expected to be connected and we're not. So this is why it's getting us this failed to fetch here. We could change this here to say just error in general. And now if I go over to that browser page again, I just refresh this. Actually, I first need to make sure we're online. Refresh this back to offline. Now when I click this, you can just see it's logging out error, that text that we specifically supplied. This is pretty much the main use case for the catch portion of the fetch, the failure version. But really, this is not something you're going to have to run into too much, so you don't have to worry about it very often. The important thing to note, though, is that if you are doing a fetch and you get some kind of 404 error or 500 error from the server, it's still going to follow your success logic because it was an expected response. Even though it wasn't what you necessarily wanted, it was still a expected response because you were connected to the internet. Let's just go back here to online mode, minimize this back down, and minimize this, save this again. Let's just get rid of this button click because we just want to do stuff right away whenever we save. So do stuff. There we go. So now every time I save, it's just going to do this request. Let's just put this back to a user that we already know exist. There we go. Everything's working as expected. Now with fetch, so far all we've done is tried to get data from a server. And that's the default behavior of fetch. If all you do is pass a URL like this, it's just going to try to get data from the server. What happens if we want to actually send data to the server? Well, in order to do that with fetch, you need to pass it a second parameter. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Just get rid of a lot of this if, is, if else check here. So we're just back to essentially our normal use case. We're even gonna get rid of this try catch just so the code is a little bit cleaner and easier to read. So we're doing our fetch, converting it to JSON and printing out the user. If I save, you see it still all works. So the fetch we can pass in here a second parameter. And this is just an object. And this object is just a bunch of options that you can pass to fetch to modify how it works. And if we wanna tell fetch that we want to send data to the server, the best way to do that is by setting the method 
In our case, we're doing a post request because we want to send data to the server. We want to post data to the server because we're trying to create a new user in our case. That's what we're going to do. Let's take a look at this type of code, JSON type of code, on how we would create a user. So we can go down here and you can see it says post slash post. So it looks like we can't even create a user. We can create a post though. So we can post to slash post. So let's go post here. So we have this JSON placeholder dot type of code dot com slash post. And this is essentially like a blog post in our case. We can create a post by using this post at the slash posts. And I know the use of post and post may be a little confusing because they're both the same word, but this post down here just tells us what we're doing. We're doing a creation on the server. We're posting data to the server. And this post up here is just the collection of data we're accessing. It could be users, it could be comments, for example, but this API only supports posting to the post endpoint. So we're just gonna be using slash posts up here to create a new post. So this on its own is not actually going to really do anything for us. We come down here, we could say, this is going to be a post here. We can log out this post and we save. You notice we just get a post with an ID of 101. It has no information associated with it at all. And that's because we're not actually sending data. We're telling this that we're going to be sending data, but we don't actually send any data along with it. In order to send data with our request, we need to send it inside of something called the body. And this here allows us to send data to the server. Let's just pass it an object. For example, we want to put the title of our post to new post. And if we save this, you'll notice it still just has an ID. And again, the reason for that is that this body must be a string. So we need to convert our object to a string. And to do that, we need to use json.stringify. This is going to convert our object here into a string version of JSON. So if we just go here to our post, you can see here that these posts are a stringed version of our JSON. So what we need to do is just convert this JavaScript object here to a string JSON version. That's what json.stringify does. So now if we save this, again, you'll notice it still doesn't actually update our object here, our post. And the reason for that is that we need to pass one final thing, which is telling the server what our data looks like. And to do that, we need to pass along a header. So we can say headers here, and this headers is going to be an object. And this object has a key value pair. The key is the name of the header. In our case, we want to set the content type and it's important that you have capital c hyphen capital type and this needs to be inside of quotes like this because you can't create a javascript object that has a hyphen inside of it that just doesn't work so since we need to have this with a hyphen inside of it we need to put quotes around it single or double it really doesn't matter this is just telling javascript that this is the key for our key value inside of our object and since it has a hyphen that's why we need to wrap it in these quotes here the next thing we need to do is tell it that we are passing it JSON. To do that, you just say application slash JSON. Now, if we save this, we will see that we now have a title being passed along to our post because this endpoint expects a title as one of the parameters for its post. Now we're creating a new post that has an ID 101 and the title new post. And it's important to note that if you're using a JSON API, which most APIs are gonna be JSON based, the header is important that you specify content type of application slash JSON and that you always stringify your body because you can't just pass it an object, you need to pass it a string. Those are the two most important things to understand when dealing with any JSON API. Now it's your turn to actually try this out. What I want you to do is on this JSON placeholder, I want you to get here all of the comments with the post ID one. That's this URL right here. So we can just come up here and say slash comments, question mark, post ID equals one. This is going to be the URL you use. And all I want you to do is just do a fetch whether it's promise-based or async-based, it doesn't matter, but I wanted to fetch out all of the comments and just print them out to the screen. So pause the video here so you can try this out, and then I'll show you how it's done. So hopefully you've taken a little bit of time to try this. We're gonna do the promise-based version. So we can say here, fetch, and we wanna fetch that URL, which in our case is slash comments, post ID equals one. And then what we wanna do, is just come in here and say dot then, this is going to be our response. Generally, this is called RES because it's abbreviated. In this response, all we want to do is to convert it to JSON. So we can just say res.json. And since this is an arrow function, it's automatically returning this for us. So the next thing that we can do is we're going to be getting our data, which in our place is just our comments. And all I want to do is console.log each one of our comments. Now, if I save this, you can see all five of the comments for that post are being printed out. You can see the body here the email, ID, name, post ID, all that information for each one of our comments. And that's all it takes to do this inside of this promise-based version.
And that's all there is to the Fetch API. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about one of the most difficult DOM based topics, which is the event loop. So I can't wait to see you in that video to hopefully make it all make sense.